Variations in heating. Land and water contrasts. The atmosphere is heated mainly by heat re-radiated from Earth rather than by heat from the sun. Thus, the heating of the Earth's surface is a primary control of the heating of the air above it. To comprehend variations in the air temperatures, it is useful to understand how different kinds of surfaces react to solar energy. There is considerable variation in the absorbing and reflecting capabilities of the almost limitless kinds of surfaces found on Earth. Soil, water, grass, trees, cement, rooftops, and so forth. Their varying receptivity to insulation in turn causes differences in the temperature of the overlying air. By far the most significant contrasts are those between land and water surfaces. The generalization is that land heats and cools faster and to a greater degree than water. Heating. A land surface heats up more rapidly and reaches a higher temperature than a comparable water surface subject to the same insulation. In essence, a thin layer of land is heated to relatively high temperatures, whereas a thick layer of water is heated more slowly to moderate temperatures. There are several significant reasons for this. Water has a higher specific heat than land. Specific heat is the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. The specific heat of water is about five times as great as that of land, which means that water can absorb much more solar energy without its temperature increasing. The sun's rays penetrate water more deeply than they do the land. That is, water is a better transmitter than land. Thus, in water, the heat is diffused over a much greater volume of matter and maximum temperatures remain considerably lower than they do on land where the heat is concentrated and maximum temperatures can be much higher. Water is highly mobile, and so turbulent mixing and ocean currents disperse the heat both broadly and deeply. Land, of course, is essentially immobile, and so heat is dispersed only by conduction, and land is a very poor conductor. The unlimited availability of moisture on a water surface means that evaporation is much more prevalent than on a land surface. The latent heat needed for this evaporation is drawn from the water and its immediate surroundings, causing a drop in temperature. Thus the cooling effect of evaporation slows down any heat buildup on a water surface. Cooling. When both are overlain by air at the same temperature, a land surface cools more rapidly and to a lower temperature than a water surface. During winter, the shallow heated layer of land radiates its heat away quickly. Water loses its heat more gradually because the heat has been stored deeply and is brought only slowly to the surface for radiation. As the surface water cools, it sinks and is replaced by warmer upwellings from below. The entire water body must be cooled before the surface temperatures decrease significantly. The significance of these contrasts between land and water heating and cooling rates is that both the hottest and coldest areas of Earth are found in the interiors of continents distant from the influence of oceans.
Have a great day.